Now we're going to use technology to recreate the graph on the previous page. And if you notice, I have both GeoGebra and a graphing calculator up. So let's start by using the graphing calculator and clicking on Y equals. And then we're going to go ahead and type in, first with this little negative button, negative 15, then X squared plus 110X plus 1200. And then let's go ahead and click our graph, and we still have to mess with the window. Well, while that graphs, let's go over here to GeoGebra, and you don't have to do both, so pick whatever technology you prefer to use for this class and stick to that one. Um, if you take classes with anyone else in the future, you will know, need to know how to use a TI, so maybe keep these videos in your back pocket somewhere so that you can reference them when you are in someone else's class someday. So here in GeoGebra, actually, we can even type R. Let's type R of X so it matches our model from our handout. R of x equals negative 15x squared plus 110x plus 1200. Okay, so I can't see anything on GeoGebra either. So let's fix our window first in um, TI. So we click on our window button. And if we're looking at the graph on your notes on page 190, you notice that the windows, the x values, go from negative 7. So let's start there, negative seven, all the way to positive 15, and let's count by ones. Our scale on the horizontal x-axis will be ones. Now our vertical axis, let's go down to negative 250. And then let's go all the way up to say, actually, I'm gonna change it. Let's go to negative 300 so it matches more to our handout. And let's go all the way up to, say, 1,500. And I'm going to use increments of 100 here. I might even go 200. For now, this works. And there is the recreation of the graph from our handout from the first part of this guided lecture. On GeoGebra, it's a bit easier. Just click and zoom out with your mouse. And that looks a little too narrow, so I'm going to fix that by clicking on this tools icon and move graphics view. And now I can hover over the vertical axis and just pull it downward. There we are. That's much nicer. And I can zoom in and have a pretty good view on both devices now. All right, now that we've recreated the graphs using technology and two different technologies, mind you, let's use technology to find our x-intercepts. On GeoGebra, it's super easy. Just tap this Roots button that's here in Tools and click on your graph and then go back to the calculator and there are your x-intercepts. And I will say our guess of 13.3 for one of the x-intercepts was pretty good, like spot on. So now on the TI, it's a little tougher. So we're gonna go to this blue calc menu by hitting the second button, Trace, and then you'll see zeros right there is number two. And you have to do them one at a time and so click on this until you get to the left side. And when I say left side, the left side of this intercept. And then I click, and then the right side, click, and then I'm going to guess. And of course, it's correct. The guess of negative six zero is the correct y-intercept. All right, now let's do the same thing for the other x-intercept. So blue button to go to calc, and then number two on your keyboard to get to zero. And then we have to move all the way to the next intercept. So that's here, and I'm gonna leave my mouse cursor there. And I need to move this little crosshatch to the left of this point here. So I'm just gonna keep holding this arrow button down until I get to somewhere to the left. That's a good spot and then hit enter, which is here. Then keep going to the right, enter, and then go somewhere in the middle to guess. And again, I get 13.33 and y equals zero. So those x-intercepts are correct. Please take a moment and write them down under number six on page 191. Now, for number seven, how close was each of our answers to from the calculator? Um, how close was it to our guess? And we were pretty close. We were exact for negative six, and we were correct to one decimal place for 13.33. 
Now, for number eight, let's mark the graph at a different point that shares the same y-coordinate with the y-intercept. Now here, it's really easy to see in GeoGebra that the y-intercept is at 1200, and I want to mark this spot right here. And the easiest way to do that is type in y equals 1200 to get this line, and you'll see this point right here, that intersection. It also answers our, our question, which is use technology to find the precise value at this point. So the precise x value at this point is 733, so that would represent a ticket increase of $7.33, bringing the total ticket cost to $13.33. And that would be the same revenue as we were at here at 1200. Now let's do the same thing with the TI. With the TI, we go to y equals, and I'm gonna go down to this next line, and I'm gonna hit 1200. So y equals 1200 is my next graph. And that will draw the same horizontal line I have. And actually, I can even quickly make sure the colors match. So let me go settings, and I'm gonna make my model, oops, that's purple, into blue. Why doesn't that work? Settings color blue. Okay. Oh, I'm stuck in the wrong one. Let me do that one more time. Apologies for the delay. So let settings, color blue. Wonderful. And now let's go ahead and change this one here. Settings, color to red. Wonderful. Now these two graphs match visually, aesthetically. They match blue and red. So I want to find out what this value is using the TI calculator. So I know I have this y-intercept at 1200. Well, what is this x value? So we can use the calc menu again. Second, trace to get into calc. And we're going to use intersect. So type the number 5 on your calculator. And then first curve, it's on the blue. Go ahead and hit enter. And then it moves the cursor to the red curve. You're good. And now you have to scroll over and find a good spot where you think they intersect. So I guess. And I'm going to go here and hit enter. And look at that, we are correct. In both cases, we have the same intersection of 733 with a y value of 1200. All right, next, for number nine, we wanna mark the graph at the highest point. And this is called its vertex. And we're gonna use technology to find the precise value at this point. So with GeoGebra, it is the easiest. You click on Extremum and click on this blue graph. And then I can go back to my calculator view and see the value of <clears throat> the vertex, so the x value and the y value. All these decimals are kind of getting in the way, so I'm going to go here to Settings and here. Right, this side. Ah, there we go. So on this gear icon, it's 13 decimal places. Let's go to 4. That's a little easier to read. Perfect. So this is located at 3.6667, and the y value is 1,401.6667. Basically, the 6 repeats indefinitely, and when we round it, we round it to 7. Let's do the same thing on the TI. So again, second, calc, and we're going to go to number 4, which is maximum. So we have to guess some left bound of this max by clicking this left button. And if you notice, right now we are not to the left of it, so now we are. Then I'm going to guess the right bound by clicking to the right. And then I'm going to guess where I think the max is located. And we get the same value, well, nearly the same value. Rounding is a little different, but if we round to like four decimal places, three, two, even one decimal place, we'll have the same answer. Now, before I end this, I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, find the vertex that is manually, since there's no real good place in these notes where you've been taught how to do that.